Cloudy skies today are high temperature around 80 and a south wind again at 15 to 30 miles per hour. Partly cloudy tonight, breezy and mild, a low temperature at 67. Tomorrow back in the mid It's one of the strangest spy stories ever told. Pretty warm, high temperature 87 degrees on Saturday. Involving seduction, guns, close friends of Vladimir Putin. It's all about this woman, Maria Butina. I'm a representative of uh, Russian Federation here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm visiting from Russia. Do you want to continue the politics of sanctions? I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin. It's a story of alleged political infiltration played out not in the back rooms and corridors of Washington, D.C., but in the remote towns of rural America. Prosecutors say a web of sex and lies connected accused the 29 year old Maria Fatal Butina. Butina accused of conspiracy and trying to influence U.S. policy. Maria Butina was arrested in July and charged with conspiracy and acting as a foreign agent of the Russian government. At the time, she pled not guilty, but reports tonight suggest she may change that plea. Prosecutors allege she conducted a campaign to influence top Republicans in order to advance Moscow's interests in the United States. Specifically, the indictment alleges that Bettina saw the National Rifle Association as her gateway to the Republican Party and American politics. Ms. Bettina had ties to the NRA as well as attempted to have stronger ties to the Trump campaign. Prosecutors say Bettina began her plan by embedding herself among the open-hearted, friendly folk of South Dakota. My mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. I shot a man in Reno, just to watch him die. It's a huge state, nearly the size of the UK, but with a population of under a million. She first appeared here in 2014, openly leaving a trail of her activities on social media. But to begin with, only one person was paying attention, local blogger, Corey Heidelberger. The Maria Butina story, and, the, and really, and the broader picture of, you know, Russian officials maybe trying to get in with the National Rifle Association uh, before Donald Trump got elected. And when I looked at that story, I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And I started noodling around and started to find connections between Maria Butina and South Dakota. Before coming to America, Butina had set up a pro-gun lobby group in Moscow called the Right to Bear Arms, a group the FBI says was a cover but bigger ambitions. A young 20-something from Siberia doesn't up and start her own political activism organization in Russia without some sort of support from the government. According to the FBI, Bettina used her guise as a gun enthusiast and lobbyist in order to meet local Republicans with the aim of using them to go national. From her base in Sioux Falls, South Dakota's largest town, she traveled widely across the state, joining hunts and giving speeches. Maria Bettina told many of the people she met that she really loved hunting. And this is one of the places she came to, this forest some six hours drive from Sioux Falls. She came here to join a summer camp of young Republicans, documenting it all on social media. Because here she is, in this photo in particular, it was not just Maria standing amidst all these clean-cut American kids, and I'm like, holy buckets, there's Dusty Johnson right there gazing upon Maria Butina as she makes her speech about whatever it was, guns, Russia, democracy, whatever. At the time, Johnson was an ambitious local Republican leader. He later tweeted, gushing his praise for Butina and her work for freedom in Russia. Now a congressman-elect, when I caught up with him on his recent campaign, he didn't seem quite so enamoured. You yourself went to a talk that she gave and you praised the talk afterwards. You met her? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about spies is they, uh, they deceive. And I, you know, I hope she does a lot of time in jail, that's for sure. I've got some other folks who are letting talk, so thank you. Is it not a big concern that the Republican Party in America was infiltrated by a Russian spy? 
Well, I'll tell you what, she's going to go to jail for a long time, and I would tell you if other people were aiding and abetting her while knowing she was uh, a foreign agent, they are going to be in big trouble. not embarrassing for you? Yes. 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 Within months of her arrival in the States, senior NRA members, including then-President David Keane, were taking friendship trips to Moscow, where Bettina hosted them. There are no suggestions the trips involved any wrongdoing. Among those making the Moscow trips, a man who was to become a key player in Bettina's story, Paul Erickson, South Dakotan businessman and Republican political consultant. Both a little scared, neither one prepared. The two began a relationship. Here they are singing karaoke in Moscow. Evidence maintained her lawyers of a true love story. But not everyone who knows about Ericsson was convinced. Yeah, I just know that he was in that group that went to Russia and, uh, and apparently he thought he was so handsome this chick fell in love with him in Russia. Um, I mean, I, I just, you can't even make this stuff up. This is a movie. Somebody, it's going to be a mystery comedy, you know. They're going to have that guy that was in the movie about the spy that shagged me. Prosecutors say it was Ericsson who used his extensive contacts to arrange meetings between Butina and senior Republicans. Prosecution documents detailed those extensive efforts and documents seen by investigators on Capitol Hill show an email he sent to the Trump campaign offering to set up a secret back channel to the Kremlin and a meeting with Putin. Putin is deadly serious about building a good relationship with Mr. Trump, Erickson wrote. By now the couple had made a home here together in Sioux Falls. I wanted to find out more about the nature of their relationship. No one was in, but Paul and Maria's neighbor, Shirley Helene, was at home. She had not seen Paul since Boutina's arrest, she told me. But we now know the FBI has raided this apartment for evidence. Oh, nobody's home. No one's home. <laughs> Erickson's whereabouts remain unknown, but we were told he has been visiting Boutina regularly in jail. Uh, I've never seen Paul with a woman before, so it was surprising. <laughs> and he introduced me and said she was from Russia, and that was fine. And then we'd run into each other quite a bit in the hall. She was not smiling a lot. And they she didn't seem very happy here, is that no. what you're saying? No, I didn't sense that she was delighted to be here with him. I have the feeling that he liked her more than she liked him. If you're a couple that are living together, you sometimes hold hands or something. I never saw them hug or hold hands or anything. The day we met, Shirley had just been for a meeting with the FBI. You were asked by the FBI to go and talk to them today about what you know about Maria, were you? More about Paul. I wasn't asked a lot of questions about Maria. Both a little scared. Paul Erickson has made no statement on the allegations, but media reports allege that he may too now face charges. But behind it all, prosecutors say, is this man, Alexander Torshin, the deputy governor of Russia's central bank and close ally of Vladimir Putin. According to reports, Spanish prosecutors supplied the FBI with evidence that Torshin has connections to organized crime. He allegedly acted as Butina's handler, urging her to go deeper into Republican and NRA circles. It's alleged the FBI is investigating whether Torshin, working with Butina, funneled money to the NRA to boost the Trump campaign. The NRA denies this and did not respond to our request for comment. Together, Butina and Torshin met many senior Republicans and NRA leaders. Clearly, Ms. Butina and her patron, Mr. Torshin, who's been proven to be a very much affiliated with the Russians, um, had very strong ties to the National Rifle Association. Um, Ms. Butina had ties to the NRA as well as attempted to have stronger ties to the Trump campaign. And it's already in the public press reports that Donald Trump Jr. met with Ms. Butina and Mr. Torshin at one of these NRA related events. We think events. we pictured with them. There's pictures Absolutely. of them together. Absolutely. In 2015, at the beginning of Donald Trump's campaign, Putina asked the then candidate a question. Do you want to continue the politics of sanctions? That teed him up to say for the very first time, 
that he would consider dropping sanctions against Russia. I believe I would get along very nicely with Putin, okay? And I mean, where we have the strength. I don't think you'd need the sanctions. I think An issue critical not only for Vladimir Putin, but allegedly Trump's own business dealings too, something the president denies. Since Putin's arrest, Russia's foreign ministry has been insisting she's innocent, decrying her conditions in solitary confinement. Revealingly, her picture has adorned the ministry's official Twitter page, portraying her as a political prisoner. Tonight, President Putin seemed to give a different perspective, saying he and his intelligence services don't know who Bettina is or why she might be facing jail time in the U.S. Torshin is now back in Moscow, banned from entering the United States. Tonight, reports that Butina may plead guilty to some charges, an extraordinary development after months of denial. It's just too weird, and wouldn't it be funny if someday it turned out that this Maria Butina was the person who could connect all the Trump-Russia stuff, all the influence stuff going on. Wouldn't it be funny if it turned out we could find the linchpin to the, you know, the Trump-Russia thing right here in South Dakota? With Bettina poised to make a plea deal, what will this mean for important figures in the U.S.? Will the unassuming flyover state of South Dakota prove pivotal in the outcome of the entire Trump-Russia saga?